and welcome back to Kinder Gym. Today we've got Coach Kerry here and I'm Coach E and we're going to be doing some gross motor skills, some fine motor skills and some cognitive development. I hope you're ready to have some fun. Let's go! As always, before we get started, let's go through our five S's. First is our sanitizer. So make sure you've washed your hands. Use a bit of hand sanitizer. Make sure it's nice and clean and safe. Next up is space. Check around you, make sure we have plenty of space around. There's nothing we're gonna run into, kick, fall on top of. Safety, always safety first. No matter what we're doing, first thing you should always think is this, is this safe for me? Sensible. We don't wanna be doing anything silly, so we wanna make sure we're sticking within our limitations. We're not making our body do things it doesn't wanna do. Soft surface, always. We always wanna make sure we have a soft surface when we practice our gymnastics, just in case we have fall over if we have a tricky landing. So there are five S's and let's get started. For our warm up activity today, we are going to... Let's try again. For our warm up activity today, we're going to play our game called Head, Shoulders, Noodles. So if I say heads, we'll put our hands on our heads. If I say shoulders, hands on shoulders. What about if I say knees? Oh, <laughs> hands on hips. When I say noodle, you've got to grab that noodle as fast as you can. Now, if there's somebody else at home to play with you, so your sister's there, your brother, maybe your mum wants to play, you can face each other and you face off and see who can get the noodle first. We can't do that because it's a bit unfair because I know when I'm going to say noodle. <laughs> so it's not, not quite as fair, but you guys get the idea. You know how to play this one with your uh, family at home. So let's get started. Heads, knees, belly. Shoulders, heads, noodle, get the noodle. <laughs> so every time I say noodle, you've got to grab that noodle as quickly as you can oh, okay. before the other person does. All right, heads, toes, hips, bottoms, nose, ears, eyes, toes, Now, Miss is just going to quickly go and grab the sanitizer because we just touched our nose, didn't we? Anytime we touch our face, we want to make sure we clean our hands again, sanitize again, because we're going to touch the noodle as well. So that's spreading our germs from our face to our hands to that object. So quick sanitize. We're going to go again, let's see. Hands on hips, legs, elbows, heads, shoulders. Heads, shoulders, heads, shoulders, knees, shoulders, heads, shoulders, knees, toes, middle. <laughs> I got this time. I got it this time. All right, one more. This time you're going to make it a little bit trickier. You need to turn your back to the middle. Oh, my goodness. All right, so you have to listen, but not look where that noodle is. Are we ready? Heads on shoulders. Heads on belly. Elbows. Head, knees, toes, shoulders, knees, shoulders, knees, head, knees, toes, knees, elbows, bottom, belly, shoulders, heads, noodle. <laughs> <laughs> now you can play this as many times as you want. If you've got more people in the house, you can change over and have different people fighting for the noodle and somebody else saying our body parts. For our first activity, all you need is a chair. We're going to do some sideway bunny hops with our hands on the chair. So we're going to stand on the side of the chair, facing this way. Hands will go down on the chair, about the width of our shoulders. And then we're going to jump, try and kick our bottom as we jump all the way to the other side of the chair. Whoa, let's see if I can do see it. See if we can do it. It's going to be tricky. Big jump, that's it. So we're going to lift that bottom up in the air. Give it a big kick with your feet. <laughs> that's it. So we're going to make sure our eyes are down. We're going to look up when we do it. Keep our eyes down and our hands firmly planted on the chair. Do that a few times back and forward. For our next activity, we want to throw a few of our toys around on the floor. I know we shouldn't tell them to do that, mum gets upset, but it's alright because we've got to tidy up at the end. <laughs> so grab some, some plushies, whatever toys you want to do. Put them on the floor, but don't put them in a straight line. Put them in like a zigzag or we've got a bit of an S shape happening here. And we're going to do some bear walking 
around the toys. So Miss E is going to show us how we pair walk. Down on our hands and our feet. And we're going to walk all the way around. Try and go around every single one. So we keep changing our direction. It's pretty tricky. It is tricky. It is, isn't it? It's very tricky. It's hard work. But you guys are very clever and I know you can do it. If we can keep our legs straight, that's what we want to do. If we can't quite keep them straight, that's okay as well. If we need to bend them, we bend them. Once you've gone all the way around your S shape, or whatever shape you've made, you're going to go all the way back again as well. Maybe you want to try it in reverse. We're going to need one of our toys again. I do suggest that you get a toy that's nice and flat. Don't try this with a ball. No. <laughs> Not so good with a ball, something round. So you're going to get your toy and pop them on your head. We're going to have our arms out in our aeroplane arms, and we're going to come up to our triangle balance. So bring your foot up next to your knee, next to your calf, and we're holding here for five seconds. Make sure you keep your animal on your head, put your foot down, and change to the other side, lifting up, and we go for five, four, three, two, one, and back down again. And then you can get your animal off of your head by putting up. <laughs> for this activity, we're gonna need a toy car, or truck, or whatever you've got at home. We're going to go into our front support. So hands down, up on our toes, our feet are apart, hands are shoulder width apart, belly is nice and super strong with squeezing our bottom. Now we're going to use one hand to drive the car all the way around the other hand and then we switch to the other side. So we're making figure eight. We're drawing the number eight. Now we want to do this at least three times, but if you can do it more than that, even better. We'd love to see how many times you can do it without having to have a break and Ooh. come down. So this three managed very hard three to do. times. <laughs> we want to see if we can go more than three times. So let us know how many times you get your car around in that number eight. Now we still need our little car, our little toy car. So we're going to use him to do some more circles, but this time around our feet. So we want to stand with our legs up nice and wide in our big star shape. Now see if we can keep our legs nice and straight. Bend forward, get your car, and you're going to see if we can make that eight around our feet again. So we're going to take it all the way around, so we need nice stretchy legs to do this. And again, we want to try and do this at least three times. If you can do more, and you feel super stretchy and flexible, then you can do more. I think this is quite a fun way to stretch out your legs, the back of your legs. Very fun. <laughs> Good job, this E. This week we're adding something a little bit different to our rock and roll. So we like to practice our rock and rolls all the time. But one of the reasons we're learning rock and rolls is to do back and rolls. So we're going to take a little extra step this time. We're going to start to push up into our candlestick, which is where we lift our feet up to the ceiling. Now you don't need to stay up there for very long. We just want you to practice. Just keep our legs up. Yeah, just to try rolling back, sticking your legs up in the air and trying to roll back up again. So you need to go tuck. Straight, tuck. Let's see if Miss E can do it. It's my rock and roll. So we just extend the legs up. My rock and roll. And shoot. So when we shoot our legs up, we lift our bottom up a little bit. You can use your arms just like Miss E did. Put your arms down, that will help you to lift up your bottom. And I want you guys to do that three times as well if you can. And we'd love to see you guys trying this. Moving on to our next activity, we're going to do a crab hold with crossed legs. Sounds a bit weird, but it's all right. You guys can do it. So we need to set up our crab first. Our feet are as wide as our hips are. Our hands are behind us. Now, where do your fingers point? Wherever you want them to. In a crab, some people like them out to the side. Some people like them to point in. Some people like them the other way. At the moment, we don't mind. Wherever is comfortable at the moment. Exactly, yeah. whatever's comfortable for your hands. Me, I'm an out wide like this for crabs as well. <laughs> so we're gonna squeeze our bottom and lift it up as high as we can. Now we're gonna lift up one leg and cross it over the other side and then bring it back and put it down. Other leg up and over. Now all the time we're trying to lift our bottom up. So we're squeezing our bottom as hard as we can. Try and lift it up. And we're going to do 10 leg crosses. Are we ready to count? Let's do it. Okay. Go. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo. Good job. Yeah, you can have a break. And if you really enjoy that, you can do them again. Yeah. Time for us to do some jumping. So we want to practice our one to two feet jumping. We start with one leg pointed <laughs> out in front and standing on the other leg. Now your arms, you guys can do what you like with them. You'll see whenever we show you, we always put our arms up because this is what we do in later, later levels. Totally up to you. Some people like their arms out wide as well. So we're going to stand up nice and straight. Arms out, arms out, arms in, whatever you want. Point your toe. Now you're going to do a big jump over a toy, landing on two feet. Whoa. Okay, so we want to land on two feet. We take off from one foot and land on two. That's it. And remember when we land, we always want to make sure we bend our knees. So our motorbike in this knee is going to do it again. Now it's really important that your eyes look to where you're trying to jump when we're learning how to do our one to two feet jump. Once you've got that mastered, we'll start to learn how to do it while we're looking up. But for now, we want to look where we're jumping. Beautiful. Now you can do that all the way back again as well. Try changing which foot you jump off of so you can get good on both sides. We're going to practice jumping from something a little bit higher. Now, remember from our five S's, safety. So we do not want to jump off the roof. We do not want to jump from the top of staircases. <laughs> no. We want to jump sensible height. So nothing that's any higher than your knees. Okay, if it comes up higher than your knees, that's too high for you to be jumping at home with no mats on the floor. So, we found a box that's perfect for this E to show you. See what you guys can find at home. So, we want to jump off, arms are out for balance, swing our arms down, big jump, land it out, motorbike. Bending our knees, chest is up, arms are out in front, we're nice and straight. Remember? Ride that motorbike. One more time for me, you see. Okay, standing on your box. Swing your arms back, up, jump, land, bend, hold. One, two, three. Always hold our motorbikes for three seconds. This activity is just using stuff you can find around your house. So we want to build a tower that's taller than we are. So we've got to find objects that are suitable to stack on top of each other and get them up really, really high without it falling over. <laughs> That's the trick, without it falling over. So you guys are going to search around your whole house and find what you can. So we've already got some stuff together. We thought we'd start with a chair and we've got a box, maybe a big bucket. Yeah. And a washing basket. I reckon that'd be pretty drum. good. How about the drum? And do you think it would be a good idea for me to put the ball on there? Let's see what happens if I put the ball on there. That's not going to stay up there, is it? So we don't want to use the ball. Let's get rid of the ball. What do we have here? Basket. The kitchen's a great place to look for things. <laughs> Sorry, Mum. Tupperware <laughs> cupboard. <laughs> buckets. Leftover buckets from Easter. Look at that. Do you think that's the right way to put it? Maybe that way's better. What do you think? No, that way it's got something to put on top of it. What else have we got here? We've got. Oh, look at that. Never know. You never know what you find in your house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pop that on the top. Oh my oh, goodness! It's taller. it's taller than me. Is it taller than me? See? Excellent. Look at that. See? Simple. We built a tower just with stuff that's lying around the place. Now, the most important part is taking the tower down and you've got to put all of the stuff away. So wherever right, you found, you found it, it, you need to put it back. <laughs> Not just on the floor in the corner. <laughs> Whatever you got, you now need to take it all back to where, it's, where it was from, like nothing ever happened. Okay. This activity, all you need is some peaks, so go raid the laundry. Check with <laughs> mum and dad first, as they're doing the washing. They might want the pegs to hang don't on. Don't take them off the washing don't line. Don't take them off the line. <laughs> Definitely don't take them off the line. So we're going to see how long of a stick we can build with pegs. So we're going to be practicing our little pencil grips, our little fine motor. So we're going to clip them on and see how long 
we can make our stick a fork, oh. it just falls over. <laughs> Not very long for me. <laughs> now, depending on what sort of pegs you've got, it will depend how easy or hard it is and how long you can make the stick. I know that plastic ones don't work so well sometimes. The really big ones don't work so good either. Now, if we hold it out like this, I can, yeah, <laughs> it's going to collapse, isn't it? So we've got a much better chance of making it tall by holding it upright. And we're going to add our peg onto the bottom one. Okay, so mums and dads, we're working our fine motor skills here, our eye-hand coordination, as well as our grip strength. Okay, so these are our, our pencil gripping fingers. Now at the same time, we're trying to balance. Balance! <laughs> so just the simple act of trying to keep that little tower balancing is working our grip strength because the little muscles in our hands are having to make little adjustments to try and keep it upright. I'm not very good it at It is easy if you hold it in the middle. It's definitely easier mm. if you hold it in the middle. You can add to the top and to the bottom. Mine just is falling all over the place. <laughs> Uh oh. Now as well, depending on what sort of pegs you've got, it might be hard to get the, the peg in at the end because it's very narrow. So you just have to squeeze a little bit, a little bit tighter, a little bit harder. You might even be able to make some shapes with them. You could. If you bend it one way, bend it another way. Look at that. What's that? That's kind of a rectangle with an extra. It kind of looks like a cube. <laughs> it does look like a cube. So you can, once you, you have a little bit of a, a shape, you can then <laughs> make different, different shapes, make some letters, try to make an S here. I'm going to make an E for Coach E. E. That should be an easy one to do. Oh, I've got a funny, funny S here. Let's make it a bit bigger. There we go, there's an S. So you can make all sorts of different shapes, different letters. Maybe you can make some numbers with them as well. Maybe you can even make a shape on the floor with them. You can put it in the shape of an animal or something. That's a good idea. There's all sorts of things we can do with our pegs. So let's get inventive and let's see how many different things we can come up with. with Mum and Dad's pegs that they're not using to hang out That's the washing. Right. We're making our fingers nice and strong. That's right. Remember, crocodile snapping fingers. <laughs> our next task is a little bit of a scavenger hunt with your name. Yay! So, Miss E spells her name E M A N. Correct. So, first, she's going to go and find something that starts with the letter E. So, I while know. you go, Hmm. Let's think about some words that start with E. So, well, this one tells us one. Elephant, egg, extra. What other E words can we think of? Oh, well, I think she Miss found Perry. one. I found Easter Bunny. Easter Bunny. Here we go. We have our E. Our next letter is... M. M. Hmm. I'll be back. <laughs> so M is for monkey. It's also for mayhem, which it is sometimes in this gym. <laughs> and I found some maracas. M for maracas. Next up we have A. Ooh. A for alligator. Mm. A. Okay. What else? We have A for apple, A for aardvark. I don't know why, I just love that word. <laughs> and A for aeroplane. aeroplane. We've got our little aeroplane toys. We love those little guys. A is for aeroplane. And our last one, N. So N is half an M. It is half an M. <laughs> Starts with N. Oh, Let me go have a look. Could be tricky in the gym finding something starting with N. What do we have here? N is for nest. N is for nod. N is for no. We don't like saying that one. What has Miss E found? Well, we used this before. It's a noodle. Of course, N is for noodle. 
So you guys can now go and find something in your house for each letter of your name. If you have the same letter twice, like I do, Kerry has K E R R I E. So I have two E's and two R's. That means I'd have to find two things that start with E and two things that start with R. You can't use the same thing. <laughs> no, no cheating. <laughs> so go and find objects in your house that start with the letters from your name. Time for our book of the day. So you know I love animals. I'm always talking about animals. I try to make you guys be animals. So let's learn a little bit about some animals. Today's book is Australian Animals, Mothers and Babies. What do we got on the front here? It's a galah. I love galahs. Beautiful birds. Kangaroos. Kangaroo and her joey love to jump and play. Wombats. Wombat and her baby like to cuddle all day. Oh, look at the little babies. Aren't they cute? Koalas. Here's our koala. Koala and her baby snooze in the tree, nuzzling together as happy as can be. Look at them sitting up in the tree. Oh, the baby's on mum's back. <gasps> crocodiles. I love crocodiles. They're one of my favourites. Out of the lagoon comes a snappy crocodile. Here she is. Her little ones follow and they waddle for a while. See, even baby crocodiles are cute. Fairy penguins. Fairy penguin and her chick have the softest snuggles. Echidnas. Oh, what's that? Echidna plays happily with her three little puggles. Did you know that that's what a baby echidna is called? It's a puggle. Oh, look at that. Sugar gliders. Sugar gliders are very cute too. You know, they're only about that big. They're tiny little things. Sugar glider leaps and soars through the sky. Her little Joey watches. He wants to have a try. See, she's flying through the air. That looks like a beanie. <laughs> and that's a ball of wool. Yabby's yabby and her baby hold each other's claws. Oh, look, light bulb. Yabbies. The yabbies, you find them in creeks and in rivers. Great white sharks. The great white sharks have the biggest jaws. That's true, they do. Very big jaws. Quokkas, we all know what quokkas are. They're so cute. Quokka and her joeys give the sweetest smiles. They are always hungry and search for food for miles. Look, oh. They're in Western Australia, the quokkas, a place called Rotnest Island. Cockatoos, we all see the cockatoos, they always get in the bins, don't they? Cockatoo gives her chick a crunchy nut to eat. Cassowaries, the speedy cassowaries, have very tired feet. I saw a cassowary once up in Queensland. They're very beautiful, but they're a little bit scary too. They have big claws on their feet. Dingoes, Dingo shows her little pup how to growl and howl. Tasmanian devils. The sneaky Tasmanian devils go out on the prowl. They're very cute little things as well. A little bit ferocious looking and sounding, but they're harmless to us. Wow, that's so colourful. Look at that. The flying foxes. The flying foxes love to fly, swooping and diving way up high. Who hears flying foxes in their backyard at night? I know I do. We've got some really, really tall trees and they love to come in and eat the berries and the nuts off of the tree. Thorny dragons, now they're in Northern Territory, they live out in the desert. The thorny dragons love the warm, sunny weather. It's true because it's very hot out there. If you go out to Uluru, you'll probably find one. Kookaburras, oh, we all love a kookaburra laughing. Kookaburra and her chick laugh loudly together. They certainly do, they're very loud kookaburras. Have you ever been woken up by a kookaburra in the morning? Very noisy. Bilby's Bilby and her Joey dig a brand new home. They build it in the wild so they have room to roam. It shells looks like a funnel. Isn't that clever? Turtles. Turtle and her little ones paddle side by side. Oh look, we've got one, two, three, four little baby turtles. 
Stingrays, the stingrays swish and swoosh against the tide. That's very clever, they've made them out of the shells there too. And that's the end of our animals, Australian Animals book with the mothers and babies. We hope to see you again next time, bye bye. Well, it's now time for our cool down. We hope you've had lots of fun today, but we need, really need to cool down our muscles that we used. So let's sit in our straddle position. Legs out nice and wide, pointing our toes, and we're gonna put our arms right up in the sky, back nice and straight, and we're gonna go down to one side, and hold for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Come up back to the middle, and the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Back up to the middle again, and come forward as far as you can. One, two, three, four, five and bring your hands back and I want you to tap as loud as you can on the floor. Four, one, two, three, four, five. Good job. Bring your legs in into your butterfly position. And we're going to make our butterfly wings fly. Four, five, four, three, two, one. This time I want you to rock from side to side in your butterfly position. One, two, three, four, Five. And I want you now to bring your nose all the way down to your toes. And hold. One, two, three, four, five. And sit back up again. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hope you had lots of fun. And I hope you cleaned up all that mess you made in Mum's lounge room. We'll see you next time. Bye.